And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, buddy! Act three! Act three! Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again on the Pope on Film podcast for us to electric slide our way into the third and final act of the show. And it is said third act, wherein we finally, in eventually, get around to discussing our all-new compilation of the greatest hits of the 70s on four LPs, three cassettes, or two CDs, but it's not available in stores, so call us now. Movie of the week! And this week, we inch our way ever closer to the end of our summer-long deep dive into the IMDb Bottom 100 with a look at one of my all-time favorite bad movies, number six on the list. So uh, yes. we are near the, we are in the end game, folks. Yes. The 2010... Where one of us is going to have to put on the gauntlet. Yeah. And snap. Yeah. And make week... all these movies go away. <laughs> This week we are discussing the 2010 engram known as Birdemic, colon, shock and terror. Right from the beginning, from the star's robo-walk down the sidewalk, you know you're in for an amazing film. Yes. I love this movie. So I, I, I don't hate this movie, I have a certain appreciation of this movie. Uh, it's it's incredibly amateurish on every level. There's an Edwardian but, quality to it, definitely. But if this was all by twelve year old kids. Everybody would be flipping out about it. Yeah, yeah, like that Indiana Jones thing. You yeah, know? yeah, where they did the the remake in their backyard or the woods by their house or something. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. are interesting. Uh, I don't even know if I want to say ideas. There were interesting things that they tried in the script. And they tried in the filming. None of it really works. Yeah. You know, like this whole movie would be better with a do-over. <laughs> well, it's funny you should mention that because the guy made Birdemic for next to nothing. And... You know, he wrote the script, he filmed it, he directed it, he edited it, he, he did everything himself and tried to release it and it became like a cult hit. And so some big studio, well, not big studios, but big to that guy studios said, hey, we want you to do a sequel. So they sort of rushed a sequel out, which was basically a parody of the first film with a slightly bigger budget, and it's it's just, it's bad for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. It's like, it's like watching 2000 Maniacs and then watching the 2014 film 2001 Maniacs, you know? Yeah. And it's like, okay, this is not the same. I, this is, I, appreciate the suckage of this movie. And it does suck. Oh my god, the star cannot act. He cannot look at someone normally. He 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 can't even walk like a yeah. human. It's astounding. Well, Time is the, fleeting. The, the the first problem is is, you know, the script can use a big fucking rewrite, you know? Yeah. And yeah. if you are not going to be able to show these people 
as rich and successful as they are, then write different characters, man. I mean, you're not going to be able to afford the Imani suits to make them look like they have money or the fancy cars or whoever makes dresses. You're not going to be able to do that unless you're dating that Mnuchin chick. Maybe. Yeah, like, like, uh, uh, the guy is a super rich tech genius, but he dresses like a high school guidance counselor. Yeah. And then you're a, like, Victoria's Secret cover model. So you're, like, one of the most famous women in America, and you dress like a waitress. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you wrote the script, so you could change it. You, you, you got to try. If you're not going to have a budget, then you're going to have to make the script match what you got. Yeah. You know? Now, if he was... Well, if she was a waitress, and he was maybe an auto mechanic... Yeah. You know? Maybe a, a, a roofer, you know? Yeah, maybe they could be sucking down a chili dog behind the Tasty Freeze. Yeah. Then at least you would have some legitimate characters. Yeah. As much as people like to rip on the room, uh, I think this movie is worse. Yeah. Definitely. People are like, oh, it... People focus on the room because Tommy Wiseau, in and of it himself, is like a character that you can point at and make fun of and rip on. Whereas this was made by a Vietnamese immigrant, and his heart is in the right place. Yeah. So people oftentimes pass Birdemic to make fun of the room. Well, yeah, okay, okay. I, I think good writing should transcend language and culture, I mean, other cultures have written some damn good stories, just saying it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and the effects. Oh, well, well, first, wait, you know, it's like, main character, main character, main character, main character, talk, 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 talk. And then somewhere you run into a Mr. or Mrs. Exposition character. Yeah. And that's all they are, that's all they're there for is to spew exposition. In the beginning. What's going on. In the beginning, where the model goes to talk to her mom. I was really worried for a second. Even though I've seen this movie a million times, every time she goes to talk to her mom, I imagine I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> every time I picture the mom from the room. And it's like, damn, it's like a bad movie, Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And you you mentioned... Of... What? Go ahead. You mentioned special effects, and it's like, hold on. You mean those weren't real birds? <laughs> Holy shit. God damn. Who does their CGI? I was 100% fooled. It's yeah. funny because it's funny because you don't see the birds until like 45, 50 minutes into the film, and you're like, god damn it, I don't care about this romance. Just get to the birds. God damn it. Now it's the weakest sex scene in the world. Just give me the birds. And once the birds pop up, they start emitting the most annoying frequency known to man over and over again on a loop. And it's like, shit, please just cut back to someone in a car talking. Yeah. Because I cannot handle these bird noises anymore. And, like, there was minor background talk about the birds and the bird situation. There was some buildup. And really, nobody in this fucking movie could act. Nobody. 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 But then it went from everything
seems pretty normal to to a bird apocalypse in a fucking hurry. In a in one second, you just blink and suddenly it's a it's a bird it's a bird apocalypse. Yeah. But all of yeah. those effects, or at least most of those effects, I recommend I I recognize from a program called Particle Illusion, which never yeah. gains any real traction. And a lot of that is just stock. Yeah. Crap stock footage. out of that program. Yeah, stock footage music, stock footage special effects. Yeah, it's all So like they didn't and they didn't even like try to blend the effects into the environment or make them look different. They just look plain fucking goofy. Even even the fire looked goofy. And you could see that it was the same three fires like in a row. <laughs> well, there's also the fact that like this guy didn't have a crew. It was literally just him and his camera filming it with some people that he hired. He had zero crew. There's a story I've got. I got it here. He hired a makeup lady. Then she saw what they were doing and quit. So the director hired a second makeup lady, and the second makeup lady quit. So the female lead was the makeup lady. And so all of the actors were also the crew. And so when it came time to make credits, he just made up fake names. And it's funny because... On one hand, it's sort of like, I don't know, vaguely sweet, that it's like, this is just one guy making a movie. And he edited the film by himself in his house on the weekends when he wasn't working at his job, which was what was paying for his bizarre Hollywood dream. And so it's like, oh, there's an Ed Wood quality of like, this movie sucks and I'm going to make fun of it. But also, your heart's in the right place, fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 would, know, I would not be surprised if this person was allowed that they would turn out pretty good. Because, like, all of the elements are there. They're just not very good. You know? Yeah. And everything could use... More work and more polish. Yeah, you know, but like, but like, and I appreciate it. And you don't want a project to take forever, but you know, you literally have the program in front of you that you are lifting the effects off of. You could learn a little bit and change them up some. You have the power in front of you. Yeah. You could make the birds look more realistic. You know, with with the same thing you've taken the birds from. You yeah. know? Yeah. And he didn't do hair. it. He used them Something. straight out of the can. Yeah. Yeah. The problem that I have with discussing this movie, and one of the reasons why we haven't done it up to this point, is like, there's so much wrong with the film that I don't even know where to begin, and even though our podcast is super old, I don't even focus solely on this, we would not have time to discuss all of the problems with this movie, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, you open the page on a Where's Waldo book. Yeah. Uh, you open the page on a Where's Waldo book, and, and it, talking about Birdemic is like, it's like, hey, describe all the people in this Where's Waldo book. And it's like, where do I begin? There's 5,000 people here. How in the world do I begin to explain this Where's Waldo page, and that's that's Birdemic, like, where do we begin talking about this film? Like, the wooden acting, the horrible script, the lack of even an iota of chemistry between these two stars who obviously have never met each other before. No. The atrocious CGI, the clothes hangers, or the band at a restaurant playing an entire concert to just two people. Like, like where in the world do we begin because it's all shit? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's tough. Yeah, funny. Uh, I love you, and I hate to do this. Why don't you hit us with the intense plot of this week's tale? Most of the movie is taken up with just human, well, I have to put in really big air quotes, drama. Where he is a, he is a wealthy software fiction, I, I he had a really, really weird ass description of what he did, which yeah. implies that they just fucking made it up. Yeah. Coder was in there somewhere. Anyway, so for as powerful as he is, he has a really, really tiny cubicle. Yeah, yeah. But he has made the biggest sale of his life. Oh. Yeah. And he he is somehow responsible for having engineered the sale of this business to yeah. Oracle. So they're, they're all going to be rich on this deal. Meanwhile, there is a girl that he started stalking after having seen her in a diner. Yeah. Who was pretty attractive and has become a uh, Victoria's Secret cover girl. He walks like the Terminator. He walks like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator. That's how he walks. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. I bet you that was practiced. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, this uh, is a fun... cool way to walk. I'm going to walk like this. Fun fact, that actor, Alan Bach, he was an extra in an episode of Parks and Recreation. Yeah. Season 3, episode 2, entitled Eagleton, he's sitting there during a town meeting. You can 100% see him. That's, that's the guy from Birdemic. <laughs> in an episode of the hit NBC show, Parks and Recreation. I just wanted to, to point that out. So we spend a lot of time really exploring how successful they both are in various ways, either meeting and talking with their mother or whatever. It's human, quote, unquote, drama. It, which... It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, hey, let me tell you about how successful I am. I can't show you, so I will tell you. Yes. I am successful. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Do not look for any proof that I am successful because we don't have a budget to show you. But believe me, I am very successful. I don't want to dress like I'm successful, and apparently neither do you. Yeah. So let's go out to the, let's hang out in this podunk town somewhere in USA. And have a cheeseburger. Yeah. Because we're successful. Yeah. We can do that. Were they in a laundromat at one point? I don't know. How they, many really there was a montage. There was a montage where they went to a bunch of different places. Was there? There was a montage where they went to where they went to a bunch of different places. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And then. Birds happened. Now, there was indication leading through the movie that the birds were coming from various news bits and things like that. Yes. Uh, but we, we really effectively... You know, we didn't see, like, Ben run past a couple of zombies beating <clears throat> up to the farmhouse. We didn't see that. We saw suddenly the farmhouse was completely surrounded with zombies as far as the eye can see. Except it wasn't zombies, it was birds. Yeah. So all that human drama in the beginning, 
you don't need that anymore. Take a pin out of that. <laughs> yeah. Because none of that is going to matter from here on in. And there was a friend and her girlfriend or whatever, and, and everything, my God, looks so cheap, like the agency that called her to tell her about the Victoria's Secret job. It's like, really? Just like... Just a woman at a desk. Painted it on some poster board and stuck it to the wall? You yeah. know? And you did the same thing with 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 Imagine Peace? Like, really? Yeah. Like, wow. That's awful. <laughs> yeah. Again, maybe a little bit more time taken. You could have come up with some original artwork. Uh, but yeah, once funny, the birds I know that get this... there, they become ace bird killers. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like if the Green Beret had a bird squad, you know, like a special subsection of the Green Beret who, who would show up if pelicans got out of hand. You know? Yeah. If Flamingo <laughs> this is my got a bit lippy, they would send these guys. But they don't really exist. I mean, he's still like a software engineer fantasy whatever he is. The other guy, I don't, I don't know enough to care what they were. They were friends. That's all I know. And this yeah, thank God at him with automatic weapons. They went after him with the fucking coat hangers. Thank first, God. Like, thank God. Thank God that guy happened to have with him a machine gun with an unlimited amount of bullets. Like, thank goodness. Hey, yeah. we're going to go to this easy-ass motel, but just to be safe, I better bring my machine gun with unlimited bullets. Yeah. Just to be safe. Yeah. It's, it's kind of nice, though, that, that, that you, wake up so, you wake up in the morning... You know, Feeling like P. Diddy? You're like, how hungover are you? Are, are you going to go for the continental breakfast and bring some back with whoever's in the room with you or anything like that? And you open up the door and it's bird apocalypse. Yep. And you're just looking at that for a while. I mean, I think the birds were dropping bombs. Not sure where all the flames when, came from. When the birds, the birds would dive bomb and then explode. No one ever mentions it. That when the <laughs> birds decide to dive bomb, they explode. But then at least you look at that, you take the scene in, then you shut the motel room door again, and at least, thank God, Somebody already has a contingency plan in place for such a possibility. Somebody yeah. has already thought about what you need to do if birds went wild and started to explode. And they came up with coat hangers. Okay, it's not good, but there was at least a plan. Yeah. At the very least. At least there was a plan. I mean, somebody stood there and was like, killer birds, coat hanger. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and, like, that was kind of it. They, the movie suddenly kind of wants to be Night of the Living Dead. Again, with birds. Yeah. So we start having our characters die or whatever. A couple of kids wind up showing up. I don't know. The one dude kind of like picks up a family along the way. Or... Nothing terribly important. No. Not at all. And then the best that I got it, for some reason... 
the birds just kind of decided they had enough. And they just left. They just legitimately decided to leave. Yeah. yeah. So they all sat down on a beach and watched all the birds fly away like they were watching Godzilla return to Monster Island. And it, and it stays on them for so long. It stays on just, them through the whole fucking closing song. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Okay, so, funny. Yes. Okay, so I've got some behind the scenes. So, this is a 2010 movie. I dare say thriller, with finger quotes. Uh, written and directed, and everything by a Vietnamese software developer with dreams yeah. named, named James Nguyen, who, as he repeatedly said to the press, saw the birds and the documentary An Inconvenient Truth and decided to make his romantic thriller. So this Vietnamese non-director and non-screenwriter, you know, he lived in L.A. and he has dreams of being a Hollywood big shot. In 2003, he used his software money to make an extremely low-budget romantic film called Julie and Jack. The entire thing is free on YouTube, and we would see it, but I don't hate you that much. <laughs> but there is a general consensus that uh, in the comments of the movie that the acting is leaps and bounds better than Burdenic. Yeah, well. So, at least there's like that. Everything else seems to be the same. Bad lighting, bad sets, bad everything, because it's just this one guy with no experience trying to make it work with a very small amount of money. Well, uh, I, I would be happy if he shows improvement. Like, this is a guy I can get behind to root for. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. like... yeah. It's 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 amateurish. It's all very amateurish, yeah. you know. But there's something there. There's something that you could build on. There's something you can learn more about and do better. I like the fact that James Naguyan made Birdemic, and then everyone laughed at it, and then he said. Uh, people are watching my film and they are laughing and maybe they just do not understand the fact that I made such a good thriller. And it is very scary and it teaches you a lesson about the environment. And it's like, okay, you made a crappy movie, but at least, at the very least, you're not Tommy we sewing this and saying, yes, I did make a comedy. Yeah, It was bad on purpose because I am a genius. Like, at least you're not we really sewing my ass. Here. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not admitting to the fact that it's bad and saying, "Oh, people just don't understand my art." But like, I take that over trying to and God spoke this and saying, "Well, for my next film, I thought, what would be the pinnacle of comedy?" You know, like yeah. it, at least you're not doing that. So after Julian Jack. In 2005, he directed a science fiction thriller called Replica, which would stay unreleased. This is never a good sign. Um, his 2005 film Replica would stay unreleased until 2017, when it would finally be released by Riff Tracks. Oh. That's not a sign of quality, that your film finally gets released on oh, Riff tracks, like, ooh, okay. Uh, then Verdemic happened. Uh, buddy, I know this will come as a shock to you, but the budget for this film was only, was actually under $10,000. I figured 100 mil at least. Oh my god, sure. How uh, much? Under 10000 Under 10000 Yeah. Okay. So he He's got a cast gas money. Yeah. 
He got a cast of definitely non-actors and filmed Birdemic on the weekends because everyone else had actual jobs because none of them were actors. He had zero permits, so he did it Ed Wood style. Yeah. You know, just showing up at a location and start filming, which led to a big fight between him and one of the cast members. Okay, so uh, at the present moment, the female lead does not talk to James Naguyan, and the reason is because they show up at a park to film a scene, and oh no, the bird! (laughs) And they don't have a permit, so they just showed up with their clothes hangers. I think one of the reasons for the clothes hangers were, hey, maybe we can get away with this uh, in certain shots, but we're going to be filming this in public and at the park, and we can't have guns. We yeah. don't have permits, so we need something. So they were in a hotel, and they just stole clothes hangers. So, like, I understand that in a very sweet Ed Wood sort of way, but they're at a park, and they're trying to film a scene, and... Uh, a bunch of people are jogging behind the actors, and the director gets angry and starts screaming and cussing at the actors, and the female lead is like, hey, maybe don't yell at these strangers. You're being very rude. And so he got pissed and stopped talking to her while they're making the movie. And he would have one of the other actors act as an intermediary to talk to the actress. (coughs) So that's kind of sad. And so he was the entire crew. He did everything. He would have the other actors be, okay, you're going to be the cameraman this time. You're going to be the grip. Hold this. And so uh, whatever. And so when it came time to make the credits, he, he, he put a bunch of fake names in. And I, oh, and I'm so happy that he finally admitted to that that there was no crew, that it was literally just him. Because every time... I see some really bad movie from the 50s or 60s or 70s, some sort of B-movie or Grindhouse movie that's not from a studio that is yeah. even around anymore. I always think, like, did you do that? Did, do, are any of these names in the credits real? I yeah. often think that when I'm watching some really bad movie, like the, 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 the monster at Bear Mountain. Yeah. Some sort We're of like freaks, or, yeah. yeah, and then you see the credits, and it's like this big, massive list, and it's like, okay, some of these names are fake. Yeah, I'm just nobody not has sure their, that nobody is. has blood sucking freaks on their resume. Yeah, so he did the cinematography, the casting, the editing, the special effects, all of it. Very Ed Woody, and he wrapped in 2006, but the movie wasn't ready until 2010 because he's making it all of it, all of himself. So this is how. People came to love Verdenic. He's like, I'm done with my movie. I'm ready to show it. I'm ready to, 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 to get it out there. So he tries to get it into the Sundance Film Festival. Okay. Because he's convinced that this is, his, this is it. This is the one I'll be remembered for. And he's just convinced that he's made this great movie. So he tries to get it into Sundance. And of course Sundance says no. But that doesn't stop him. So he goes to the Sundance Film Festival, and he gets a shitty-ass dirt bar Yeah. to, like, have a TV in the back of the bar. There's still people laughing and drinking and music being played, and there's just a TV in the corner of the dirt bar. Yeah. And he's like, this is my theater where I'll be showing the movie. He gets his van... And he covers it in fake birds and fake blood. And he just scotch tapes on the side of the van handmade banners for his movie. And he's passing out flyers to people at Sundance trying to get them to come to this shitty-ass, dangerous-looking dirt bar to come and see his film. And a few people from a few bad movie websites went and saw the movie, like bloodydisgusting.com and uh, Dread Central and a few other uh, like bad movie people who happened to be at Sundance. And one of them was like Severin Studios, who releases like big, like out there, bizarre, outsider 
B-movie yeah. art films, and they happen to see this movie, and they're like, shit, you want to make a deal? And next thing you know, the trailer gets out, and suddenly that's on uh, Attack of the Show and uh, Talk Soup, The yeah. Soup, you know, and suddenly everyone's making fun of the trailer for this movie, and so it's released on DVD in 2011, and uh, now this is the funny, sad part about it. He's still convinced that he is like a, a movie genius, and so <coughs> he did a Kickstarter to crowdfund Birdemic 3. He asked for $200,000, oh. and he got two hundred and thirty dollars. Oh, if that's like, oh, you just, you just, you just hurt my heart. That is sad. But still, uh, James Naguyan says that Bird Demic Three Sea Eagle. Yeah. is happening and will be out next year. So get hyped for Birdemic 3 Sea Eagle. Sea which Eagle. I'm ass- which I'm assuming is like Speed 2 Cruise Control. This time yes. it's Birdemic on a boat. Is what I'm assuming he's going to go the next direction with this. So get ready for Birdemic 3 and you don't have to watch a pandemic too. It's pretty. It, it's it's worse than this in a different way because it definitely has a budget, and it has like like a very small studio, but still a studio backing it. Yeah. But also, it's it's literally just a parody of the first one, and it's really really bad. It's really horrible. I'm hoping that when when and if pandemic three happens, that it goes back to fuck the studio, fuck all of that. I myself am going to go make this film just like I made the first goddamn Birdemic, and I don't need a studio, and I don't need, like, uh, actual bands to help me. I just want James Nguyen to make another Birdemic film by himself with random people that he probably got on fucking Craigslist, get some stock footage special effects, just go back to what you did the first time, you know? (laughs) That is what I am hoping, because goddammit, I hate this movie, but I love hating this movie. Yeah. You know? Because the dude's heart is in the right place, and it's kind of quaint in a do-it-yourself sort of way. Yeah. You know? Like, fucking good for you, James Naguyen. You know? This is, out of all of the movies on the IMDb Bottom 100, especially out of the ones that we've watched... A lot of them are uh, studios pouring a shit ton of money into what is a pile of shit. But this is one guy with a dream. And it's like, okay, yeah. this is the movie in the IMDb bottom 100 I can get behind. I can get behind this. I can get behind Manos, you know? Yeah. I would rather get behind... Uh, 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 Manos and Birdemic than fucking Cast Away, uh, Swept Away with yeah. Madonna. Fucking, like, this movie is a million times worse, but god damn it, I would watch Birdemic before I watch Battlefield Earth again. Yeah. And that movie was a scam. We know that now. <laughs> but I love this movie. I love this movie. My entire family gets down to hanging out with my family. That's a bop. Yeah. And I love the fact that they obviously like struck a deal with, with, with a, an owner of a restaurant to come and film when it's closed, and he's obviously the waiter. Yeah. And it's closed because it's like pitch dark outside. There's no lights, and there's no other, there is no other customers. But a band is out there like, all right, people. All right, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to get down now. And it's like, where are you looking? There are two people in there. Hanging out with my family, having ourselves a party. Love, love for Demet. Love it. Huh. 
So, Bunny? Yes. No more polls. No more. No polls. more. No more having people choose the next fun movie. We're going to watch. We are in the end game. Okay. Next week, we watch the number two. And the week after that, we finish our summer with number one. Okay. These next two weeks are going to hurt, and I apologize. Ugh. Next week, we're watching Super Baby Super Geniuses 2. It's already on the shared uh, talk talk that, that, that we have. Wow. It's the number two worst film of all time, and it will prepare us for the pain of number one. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can do this. No, I can do this. I can do this. We, 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 yeah. Yeah. We got to finish yeah. strong. Okay? So. We can't let this beat us. We got this. We got this. We got this. Yeah. These next two weeks are going to be difficult, but we can do it. We are professionals. Yes. Next week, we're doing Super Baby, Super Geniuses 2. And after that, we are finishing it off with the worst movie of all time, which, God damn it, I've been dreading watching. <laughs> God damn it, I've just been... This whole summer, I've been like, oh, eventually we're going to get to 2008's disaster movie. But, okay. We're not there yet. Super Baby, Super Geniuses 2, next week on the podcast. I may have come up with a game for us to play during our discussion of Super Baby, Super Geniuses 2, so at least there's that. Yeah. Uh... But, yeah, it's going to be difficult. But we've got this, Bunny. We have got this. We have got uh, this. My, my new notebook has a bunch of, like, weed stickers on it. This is the Oklahoma City Constant Elevation Unit. Oh. Sticker. My favorite is, this isn't a sticker for the University of Oklahoma. It says, oh, you smoke? <laughs> That's my favorite one. And uh, Oil Tycoon Concentrates. I can't do concentrates. I don't know how anyone. Uh, Amber almost went to the hospital because she was with some stoners who dab. Yeah. And she oh, was yeah. like, I, I've smoked a little bit of weed. I can try this. And then like a half hour later, she is forgetting how to breathe. Poor, poor thing. But know your doses, people. Know what you can handle. Uh, uh, I, I enjoy myself a good dab from time to time. Yeah, I, I don't because I know what I can handle. That would yeah. drive me fucking insane. So, uh, so, yeah, that's next week. Next week, we... We'll be discussing Saturday Night Live and a limo for a lame-o. We will also be talking about uh, Ryan Reynolds' new movie, Free Guy. We will also be talking about lizard people, which is always very exciting. Yes. We have a great lizard people bit that's going to open up next week, and I'm so excited about it. It's going to feature the kids. It's going to be so hilarious. And uh, Super Baby, Super Geniuses 2, the number two worst movie of all time. It's going to be painful, but we're going to do it. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, man, Texas-sized episode. The highs, the lows, the ups, the downs. Uh, man, Norman Fell. Yes. Rift Tracks. Uh, the Suicide Squad, the Emoji Movie. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. Fairly good one. A decent this episode. has been a damn good episode. Good. You know what this episode was? Uh, guys' night. 
because Natasha is gone right now. She had to go run an errand. And uh, Jeannie's gone, so this was the guys' night episode of the Full Song Bill. True. True. Hell yeah. We are partying. <laughs> I'm going to go drink a Coca-Cola right now in yeah. celebration. Uh, Maxwell, Bella is not here. Can you do Bella's uh, wrap-up line? Okay, thank you. Uh, but yes, thank you, uh, Bunny. I, 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 I agree with what you said, but you know, I, I didn't want to step on your toes because you are the person who makes those distinctions, not me. So yes, I concur with your uh, assessment, good sir. <laughs> so until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Stephen on behalf of uh, Bella, Natasha, Maxwell, Eleanor, and everybody else. I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do sparkles in the future. And you sing in odor over messy pet cat. And cookies with sprinkles on it. There you go. Do 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 do. Cut and print. Cut and 